The evidence presented is conclusive. Harry Russell's guilt is so open and shut that even a man with his criminal background, his long experience at controverting truth, still finds it impossible to utter a single word in his own defense. That concludes the state's case, Your Honor. Counsel for the defense. George. George! Your Honor, if the court will permit, may I confer with my client for a moment? Granted. What's the matter with you? Are you flipping? Now, I don't care what we agreed on. He's going to cut three years right out of your life. I told you to keep out of it, and you leave me alone. I'm not going to let you just sit here like a clam. Oh, George, I figured you for the one guy who dug me, for the one guy who really knew. Harry, you've got to tell them. I told you no. All right, if that's the way you want to play it. Now, ethically, I can't divulge this story without your consent. But I'll tell you this, buddy boy, I do have the right to ask questions. And I'm going to squeeze this story out of you sentence by sentence if you make me. You try it. You bet I will. Your Honor, my client and I have reached an understanding. Mr. Russell. I direct your attention to us an afternoon last year when you waited in a hotel room in Tokyo for a certain young lady. Now, what was her name? What was her name? All right, go on, spill it! Your Honor, my client is guilty. He did willfully break and enter, commit burglary and grand theft, but he did what I would have done, what you yourself would have done, Your Honor, under those circumstances. And despite his earlier objection against my telling this court the nature of those circumstances, I'm going to tell. People go to war for different reasons, Your Honor. Harry Russell had one of his own. The first I heard of it was outside Seoul in Korea. The Baker Company was pinned down. We couldn't stir without the help of tanks, and our tanks were somewhere else. All we could do was lie in a ditch and pray it wasn't a grave. I squirmed around to see who had joined me. I should have known. No matter where Harry was told to go, he always turned up at my right. He never said why, and I never asked him, but we both knew. Okay, so you're a tiger. I like to move. What's wrong with moving? We better stay here for a minute. You've already got the company nod for being the dog face most likely to die a hero. What are you trying to prove? Nothing, George. I'm not trying to prove nothing. I don't know. Fighting comes easy to me. <laughs> Listen, I just assume not, you know, if I had a choice. Well, what's choice? It's something you get in a card game, right? Yeah. Anyway, I've been thinking. Must be a pretty good reason for all this noise up here. Well, what did you decide? Well, first you gotta tell me something. It's a pretty good reason? Don't ask me. I only work here. No, you gotta tell me this, George. Do the other guys know about me? Know what about you? About my record back in New York, the police record. So how would they know? How would I know? Because I seen you up in the DA's office. Pretty large up there, huh, Georgie? Yeah, I own the town. Anyway, you saw the yellow sheet, right? You saw my police record. Okay, okay, so I remember. Look, New York is 12,000 miles away, so I forgot already, okay? No, no, it's not okay. <sighs> Look, I don't want you to forget. That's the point. That's part of what I meant when I said I'm trying to figure a reason for all this up here. You see, look, I was a crook, right? No, not a big crook, about so big. It didn't pay much, but I made a living, you know? And I kind of liked it. I had a lot of friends, pal. Oh, yeah, I had some guys on the force, too. Look, what I'm trying to tell you is this. I've been thinking, I've been trying to figure why we're fighting up here. And now you know. Yeah, yeah, now I know. I'm fighting so I can go back to a country where I got the right to be a crook in peace. You know what I mean? We got our first furlough in Tokyo right after that. Most of the guys headed for the places guys head for when they first get to Tokyo. But not Harry. He went straight to the nearest quartermaster. I went along. Don't ask me why. Maybe it was just curiosity. I'll take uh, one each. These. The first six. <laughs> first six? Yeah, and, uh, well, how about the Distinguished Service Cross too, General? No, no, not yet. You got uh, orders for these? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, pal, don't wrap them. I'm gonna wear them. Wear them? Yeah, wear them. <laughs> Look, Mac, nobody wears the medals. 
Well, I, th I think I will, okay? Look, you, you got any idea what happened? You're walking down the Gaines here, parading down here with all that brass on us, just tell them. Are you going to give me the medals? Look, Sergeant, oh, Sergeant. Sergeant. Give him the medals. He earned them. Ah, so he earned them. But what's he got to earn them again for? Hey! If it ain't Audie Murphy. All right, look, fellas, take it easy. So how come he don't wear dry goods like the rest of us, huh? How come he's got to wear all that brass? Well, he happens to prefer the real thing. You know, like the man would rather carry a $5 gold piece in his pocket than a $5 bill. The paper's merely the symbol. You know, the same thing with the medals and the ribbons. What do you say? George, don't, don't waste your learning on these two guys. Hey, who's Audie Murphy? The guy that you swiped them medals off of, Doug Face. Look, nobody should call dog face a dog face unless he's a dog face. Is that clear? Sure, dog face. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Fellas, I think you should apologize, you know, like say, uh, I'm very sorry, okay, before it's too late. Come on. He talks real large, don't he? He talks awful large for a dog face. <laughs> <laughs> Go that way. Now, that's not Hill 99, so don't get carried away. Yeah. See ya. Your talents are wasted in this army. Kid stuff, George. Real kid stuff. Let's give her a little time, huh? To get worked up over it being missing. What would you look at this? She even takes a good passport picture. Emily Meadow, age 22, occupation actress. Passport issued in New York. George, he's a hometown kid. New York's a big hometown, Harry. Emily Meadows. Have, have you seen a purse? No, I haven't. Oh, excuse me. Lady? Hey, uh, lady? Oh, excuse me. Lady? Lady, I, uh, I found it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> ma'am, uh, lady, uh, is it your name Emily Meadow? I mean, is that a name? Or is it a tune on a hit parade? Because it's got a great sound there. <laughs> well, how did you know? Oh, oh, I had to look inside, you know, to find out oh. what your name was and everything. <clears throat> I see you're an actress. Oh, well, I... Uh... You work somewhere in town? I mean, are you performing here? Because if you are, I'm going every night in the week, I'm going to take a front seat. I mean it. <laughs> I'm with a USO show, a tour. I work with a magician, that's oh. all. Oh, Oops. Uh, oh, oh, pardon me, ma'am. <laughs> Hi. Oh, uh, well, he sawed me in half. Oh, oh. Why would any man want to do a silly thing like that? <laughs> well, I would like to be an actress, though. Someday. You will. Oh, it's not that easy. No, I, uh, I mean it. I think you will. I can't explain it. Sometimes you get a feeling that, like, your whole head is a crystal ball, you know? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, oh, you like them? <laughs> I only know some of them. Yeah. This one's a purple heart, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, doesn't that mean you were wounded? Yeah, but I uh, heal fast. Excuse me, but do you have... Uh, are you going to be sawed in half again soon, or do you have time? Oh, next show I disappear in midair. Oh, I don't even want to see that. But not until six. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. High above the Loire Valley is a... Good morning. Oh, oh. Hiya, pal. <laughs> oh, I've been on the town. I'm telling you, they don't pull the sidewalks in around this town. You look more like you've been walking on balloons, not on sidewalks. Yeah, what a doll, man, what a doll. <laughs> Gorgeous. Hey, you know that sightseeing tour we're supposed to take tomorrow? I think you better go alone. I'm gonna be a little busy. Congratulations. What does a girl like that see in a character? Oh, George. George, I didn't tell her about my police record. Did I do wrong? Harry, 
You gotta stop thinking about me like I'm your parole officer. Okay. Do I tell her? That's when you gotta decide for yourself, Harry. Uh-uh-uh, no. You know what, I'll until you tell me how you got this one. Oh, that's hardly worth talking about. Oh, come on, please. Okay, I got mixed up with a tank. Tank? Yeah. Three or four of them, as a matter of fact. They were giving our boys a hard time. They got beautiful eyes. So I went out there and I fixed them. You fixed them? Yeah. You could do it, honey. Believe me, anybody from New York could do it. All you gotta do is not dodge traffic in Times Square. <laughs> oh, Harry, you know, it's very funny. Here I have to come halfway across the world to meet you, and all the time you were right there in New York. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. That can't be an accident. Honey, honey, you have never seen the best medal of all. You mean I've missed one? Mm, you sure have. Oh, Harry. Lady, I present this to you for distinguished service, above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah, you're going out with a character like me. <laughs> Correction. Distinguished character like you. <laughs> they were inseparable from what Harry told me the few times I was still awake when he came in. I believe I owe you some money. Oh, you know pay now. When you leave. Well, we're leaving for the States in the morning, early, before you open. Oh, I saw you go. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Sayonara. Big night? You know it, Carl. What about you? Oh, I got plans of my own. Oh, uh, you know, come to think of it, the end of our furlough is only two hangovers away, so tomorrow night being the last night, why don't we take a run over to the Ginza Club? Oh, you know Emily, she hates those joints. You going out with Emily tomorrow night? What kind of a question is that? Uh, back at the DA's office, we used to call them leading questions. Of course I'm going out with a why. Oh, that's the thing about leading questions, Harry. The man who asks them only asks, never answers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get me a medal so fast they won't know what hit them. Because I can come back real soon, and I got a reason to come back now. Oh, not for me, Harry. Only for you. You might get hurt taking chances. I've seen guys get hurt just hiding behind rocks. Harry, listen to me. I'm going home in the morning. Tour's over and they're taking us back. No. Oh. Lady, I won't let you go. Well, I don't have any choice. Now, look, what would I do here in Tokyo? This is no place for a single girl. Well, anyway, not an American girl. You know, I got a lot of nerve. I mean, a guy like me asking, yeah. Uh, I love you. Do you think it's... Do well, you think there's a chance of... Uh... Harry, you've only known me 10 days. You don't know what I'm really like. Well, I can go two ways. Uh, maybe there's a lot of things about me I haven't told you. Well, then why don't we just leave it that way, huh? Perfect. No. No, there's no leaving it. I don't want to leave it. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right, come on, lady. Let's have a little smile. Come on, lady. A little, little smile. scheduled to take off at midnight Friday. The brass liked to pick a time like midnight. It made it possible for us to enjoy breakfast in the front lines. You think I'd show, huh? Well, I'd never give it a thought. What happened? I don't know. 
George, I get with that girl, I get lost. I don't know where I am. What happened to the medals? Oh, I'll tell you about that. Uh, I can make one guess and be right 500 times. Emily. Yeah, she's holding them for me. All personnel for flight 912, report to the line at once. All personnel for flight 912. One of those guys always say things twice. Hey, George, what's the matter? You don't think I let her hold the medals for me just till I get back? Look, Harry, when I first ran into you out here, I didn't want anything to do with you. But I found out I was wrong. You began to make sense. You began to find out why you were out here. Maybe why we were all out here. So every time you got a medal, it made me feel good. Because I saw a man on, from the wrong side of the fence piling up one more credit on the right side. Now, first good-looking girl comes along, bingo, she walks over the whole card. Happy, George. Hey, wait a minute. I love her. We're going to get married. Yeah, that's right. As soon as I get back, we're going to get hitched. Imagine that, Georgia, me being hitched to the queen of the universe. She's going to wait for you in Tokyo. Sure, why not? What's she going to live on while she waits? I gave her some money. How much? Two, three hundred, why? Harry was fighting for a way of life. He had a purpose. He was fighting for Emily. And it was just too bad for the Reds. He came back from one attack with a slug in his shoulder and a dozen prisoners. And for some reason, Harry couldn't understand. Headquarters wanted to give him the Distinguished Service Cross. It wasn't long until we were back in Tokyo. Only this time it was different, really different. We'd just been told we were returning to the States to be discharged. The rotation system had finally rotated around to us. Harry couldn't wait to get to Emily's room to surprise her. Emily? Emily? Yeah, she probably went shopping. Yeah. Well, you know, you might take a couple of hours. What are we going to do? Want to fight a little bit? No, hey, watch the arm. Come on, sit down. Take it easy. Relax. Yeah, take it easy. You relax. Oh, I can't wait. Hey, George. Yeah. Looks a little neat, doesn't it? You always said she was a neat kid. Looks too neat. What does it look like to you, George? Well, it looks like maybe she, uh... uh... Well, maybe she moved. You can speak plainer than that. Okay. Looks like she beat it. I saw Harry a few times after we came home. You know how it is in New York, you get busy, and you wake up one morning and discover it six months later. Well, I woke up and saw Harry's name in the paper. He'd been arrested. I went to see him. I think he was glad to see me. Well, he wouldn't tell me anything. He didn't want me to defend him. He only had one favor to ask. Just before he'd been arrested, he managed to conceal something he'd taken from the apartment. They may send me up, George, he said. Keep these safe for me till I come back. And I knew he'd found Emily after all. Why didn't you want this story told? I got my reasons. All you have to do is reach up for an excuse. 
the best excuse in the whole world. We all know why you fell back. You made a big play to go straight. And just when you had it made, somebody on the right side knocked you back down again. George, would you leave her out of it, please? Okay? Why didn't you tell me it was her apartment you broke into? I had to read the police files to understand what was happening. And that $285 you took, the exact amount he gave her in Tokyo, Your Honor. You still love her, Harry? Yeah, but I don't need a truck to hit me. It meant nothing to her, but it was everything to me. It showed me the way things could be, the way things will be someday, you know? Counselor, moment here, please. The court has asked me to return your property, Harry. Case dismissed. Join us at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents Action Off Screen. Signature. It's as unique as the person who writes it. Spend a fascinating half hour with host Greg Jackson and world heavyweight champion Joe Frazier. Next. I'll show you.